Hello and welcome to all those who have made it until here. In a general MOOC, about 90% of those who started uh, drop out until the end. But that doesn't mean that those 90% haven't learned something. But you are the faithful lot, and I'm very proud that you made it until here. So this uh, last video is called Outlook. And I want to do three things. First, I want to briefly summarize uh, the main points that we've learned in these five weeks. Then I want to uh, go to the topic of a healthy and uh, climate-friendly planet is a fun planet, is uh, worth living, and uh, so we should go for it. And the last point, of course, is always where do we go from here? Those who are interested, what can you do to um, deepen your knowledge? And of course, which I cannot tell you now, we will um, in another uh, little lecture, we will um, give you the prizes of the 20 best students in this MOOC. It will be one ton of CO2 that we will send to you by mail. Okay, so let's start. The main messages of this MOOC, you will remember, climate change is man-made and ongoing. You see it in extreme events, you see it in other um, in other glaciers, for example, the melting of the ice caps of the globe and so forth. And uh, this has health impacts, which we see already. Think of heat waves and so forth, and which will increase in an exponential uh, way. That means it will be steeper and steeper, the impact to be felt. We'll have about 80 plus diseases which are influenced, impacted, by climate in a negative way, both communicable and non-communicable ones. Our capacity and doctor's capacity to uh, adapt and to protect the population is limited. And the health impacts in the absence of a global agreement, while I record this, we are two weeks away from COP21. When you see this, you will have the results of, 20, of COP21. So if they do not move, and come to an agreement, then there will be serious health impacts, among many other impacts. And indeed, some parts of the globe will be in inhabitable because of heat and mm, humans' limited capacity to adapt to heat. On the other hand, effective climate policies, hopefully done in two weeks, will reap enormous health co-benefit, and that's the good news. And the final point I wish to push in this last lecture is our main motive to do something about the climate is our health and particularly the health of our children and grandchildren. So let's come to the second point, enjoying a climate-friendly, healthier world. You have here the globe and health on the top and climate uh, protected climate uh, at the other end and then we go around and you see a lot of things that link health with uh, protection of the climate that are very positive that are enjoyable first one equity public health people have known for for millennia that uh, equity inequity creates ill health so if we make, and, and climate change will also increase inequities, as we have learned. So this is a common denominator. If we protect the climate, if we protect health, we will have a more equitable world. And that's a world maybe without uh, as much violence and as much cleavages, social cleavages, as we've uh, seen so far. Sustainability is a buzzword. It means that our current state and that the values and the the things we want to protect will be protected also in the future. That's what we owe our children. And that's uh, true for health, and that's true for the climate. Climate change is the perfect storm for sustainability. As Obama said, we are the first generation to feel the impacts of climate change and the last to be able to do something about it. So it's a turning point. It's a historical moment. Our generation has a responsibility. Development. In the presence of climate change, all these development gains that we've achieved as a global community in the last 50 years, inequitable uh, as they may have been, will, will be decreasing, will be lost. 
So there's no health without development. And development impacts on the ability to cope with climate change, and climate change impacts negatively on development. We've seen that in previous lectures. Now, nature's beauty is another argument why people care about uh, the climate, and that is linked, too, with green cities, more pleasant cities, which is, for us, also a way to recreate ourselves, to have leisure time, to have jogging, to have fun, uh, to do some gardening, maybe. So all this is linked together, and uh, there are many interconnections which I cannot sh uh, show you in detail now, but you can figure them out. So these things are not standing on its own, but they are all linked. And this is called planetary health. It's a new concept, maybe a new buzzword, and if you want to know more about it, go into our reading list. It's uh, just published in The Lancet in July this year. But the main things, I will put them in the center again, are these children. Uh, our children, that is what drives our action in terms of these long-term effects of climate change to protect their health. Now, the way forward. If you want to learn more, there's just a book that came out during that um, taking of all these films in, uh, just last month by my good colleague and friend Jonathan Patz and Mr. Levy. It's called Climate Change and Public Health. And it covers in much more detail as this MOOC in a very nice way the topic. So if you want to learn more, buy this book and do some more digging deep in the substance matter. If you want to join those who do research, you know that we have, uh, in many points that I, that I showed you and my colleagues, the, the, the evidence was not so good. And uh, health is worse in terms of evidence, grounding in evidence, than maybe agriculture and forestry. So we have to change this. So I would invite all those of you who have made it till the end of this MOOC to think about, can you contribute even in doing research? If you do so, if you want to do so, there are two courses that I know of. I stand to be corrected, and I'm happy to be corrected. Only two courses in this uh, world that focus on study and research methods to look at the link between climate change and health. One is in Umeå University in northern Sweden, and one is in Heidelberg University, and we will add this as a track to our long-standing climate change and health course as of July next year, 2016. So either you read and dig a little bit deeper, or you do research, and then uh, you will be one of the actors of producing evidence. You, you should act. Sitting back and say, I've done that MOOC, everything is fine now, is maybe a little bit uh, aiming low. Make your and your family's choices, everyday choices, more climate friendly. You know that in uh, richer parts of the world, more than 50% of emissions are controlled by people like me, people like uh, my neighbors, people like my students, through their choices of consumption. In uh, countries that are middle or low income, it's a little bit less, but you will also increase in those countries in consumption and that will drive emissions. So don't only point to the big politicians, to industry, to transportation. It's us as well who need to act. But use the knowledge, that's the second point here, use the knowledge that you've gained in this MOOC to influence, to bring into the debate at your village, at your town council level or at your national level, to bring in the health argument and the climate debate, climate policy debate. And lastly, uh, let's stay in touch. Here's my email address. If you contact me, please write in the subject line MOOC so that I know and can put you all in one big folder and uh, answer your uh, emails accordingly. So I thank you very much. It was uh, great to uh, have you with us. You were a lively class, interacting a lot, and let's stay in touch. Next year, we will have another version of this MOOC, and it will be produced now and updated every year. Thank you very much, and goodbye. <laughs>